the dreaded Linux from scratch. A Linux distribution you build all by yourself. It has no base. You download, compile and configure everything by hand, following simple instructions. A lot of people use it as a learning tool to get more familiar with Linux and what makes it work. I, however, having some basic knowledge of how stuff works in here, will do this thing as quickly as I can while explaining an outline of the book to you. So you won't have to go through this massive and honestly painful process to get a bit more familiar with Linux if you don't want to. Starting off, we need a place to compile LFS from. As I said, there is no base ISO or anything like that, so we will need an existing OS to compile packages for our target LFS system. I went with Linux Mint Live ISO, which worked fine in the end. One of the first steps is making sure our host has all of the required software installed and up to date, so we can compile everything with no problems. Remember, LFS is a game of precision. If you skip something important now, it will come to bite you later on. After fixing that by installing everything, I had to partition the drive. Honestly, I didn't even feel like making a separate boot partition, so I just threw everything onto an ext4 root one. These are all of the packages we will need. They are conveniently placed onto a wget list file, which will be then used to download all of them at once. As you might be thinking, those archives contain stock source code straight off of the developer's repositories. Exciting stuff, am I right? Same applies to the verification process. The md 5 sums file will be used accordingly. It is used for verifying file integrity, as well as making sure we have everything needed. As you can see, some stuff did fail. One of the packages I had to download manually while the other was vulnerable to some sort of attack, so I had to find a newer version. Let's hope this won't cause any problems, but we will see. Now we set up a compiling environment on a new user. This environment will be used so we don't harm our host system accidentally, which is always possible. In my opinion, this is unnecessary, since later we will see root into the root user, which will let us harm the host system as much as we want. Now starts the fun stuff. We are compiling some basic packages for our cross toolchain. What that is, is a collection of tools that can later on compile programs optimized for our target system instead of our host. Cross toolchains are also used across different architectures, so for example when compiling ARM code from an x86 host. In this drawing you can see what I'm talking about. I use this process when working with my from scratch operating system, CavOS, so you could say I have quite a bit of hands-on experience. Skipping a lot of the details, binutils and gcc are needed for compilation, tar, gzip and xz are needed for archive extraction, coreutils, diffutils, file, etc. provide basic stuff like cat, ls, d4, file. And of course, bus is our target cell. Now we have a working cross compiler along with many essential Linux utilities, enabling us to get in our new system via chroot. Think of this like controlling the target environment while using the host kernel. Fun fact, Docker utilizes a very similar concept under the hood. We need some more programs temporarily before we start properly installing stuff. Most importantly, there's Python, Perl and others. Most time I spent in this was spent doing the same cycle of configure, then make, and then make install, along with any special cleanup operations. This is generally how it's done when a program is built around auto tools. Now's the time where the LFS book suggests we unmount everything and back up the target system in case we mess up later. Yeah, I am not doing that. Why? So far, I had spent only about an hour and didn't care if I had to repeat the process. Remember, I'm compiling using 16 cores of my pretty beefy i9 CPU, so my copy pasting skills are pretty much the limit here. We finally reached the point where we're compiling programs that will be directly used when we boot LFS. 
Note that most are literally boring utilities and libraries geared towards development and are thus required for building Norman packages we would want to use. This is especially a trend during Beyond Linux from scratch, which has instructions for building a full user land. If this video's reception is good, I might put myself through that as well. Note that it takes significantly longer than LFS. Anyways, we are no longer assuming these programs will be used temporarily, and thus it is often suggested that we do the included sanity checks. I avoided that since I'm on a VM and those would have taken literal ages to complete. We're getting closer and closer to trying this thing out. LFS makes us manually input a bunch of stuff into config files, such as the input RC, cells and others. Not much to explain here, again, choosing the default is advised. Through Locales, Device Management and Networking Configuration, I stumbled across a broken script that ignored VMware network cards. Had to find a forum post to fix it, so yeah, that was a pain. The solution was quick enough, just comment out a line that blacklists the nick, bytes MAC address and boom, it works. Make an fstab file was also incredibly easy, since I only had an ext4 partition to worry about. The most dreaded part has come. I remember some dude in my Gen2 videos comments was complaining about how I didn't compile my own kernel. Especially that guy can now enjoy this section, where I use menu config to configure my own Linux kernel. On this Ncurses menu, you can adjust the kernel to your own hardware, which theoretically improves performance. Let me tell you a small secret, unless you start cutting out dangerous stuff, you won't see noticeable gains. By following the LFS book closely, and using some of my imagination, I managed to make a simple .config for my VMware VM. Compiling it worked fine, with no problems. One of the most satisfying processes was making my own OS release files, which are parsed by utilities like Neofets to pretty print your distro name. Nothing was cooler than registering my LFS install though. It felt like some kind of secret cool kids club, I gotta admit that. This is me taking a screenshot and posting it to my Discord. I was really satisfied with this and couldn't wait to reboot. Well, time to actually test this thing out. I unmounted everything safely, made sure to eject the disk, and when I did reboot... Yeah. Over here we say whoever doesn't have a brain has legs, or whoever Harry stumbles, along with other stuff. Those all essentially mean the same thing. Don't do stuff quickly and mindlessly, which is exactly what I did. After some troubleshooting, I found out my grub.cfg was wrong, along with my kernel configuration for AHCI. The quickest fix was switching to a different hard drive type in VMware and recompiling the kernel with VMware as SCSI support. After all was said and done, here is the result. Enjoy! Here we are, Linux from scratch successfully installed in a bit less than 4 hours, including troubleshooting time. That sounds like a world record, doesn't it? Although this was truly a roller coaster of emotions, I can't say it wasn't fun and taught me quite a bit except copy pasting. If you have some time to spare and like what you saw, try it yourself. The LFS book is linked in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, drop a subscribe and until the next one, stay safe everybody.